Hello everyone. Welcome to the Checkered Pony. I'm Lindsay. This is my podcast where I just kind of have a video document, video journal of what I've got on my table and on my needles for my projects. Um, I am a knitter. I'm fairly new to the knitting community. I uh, probably have only been knitting with needles less than a year, but approaching the year mark, yay. Uh, but it has become a, a hobby slash bordering on an obsession. Um, and I, I have other responsibilities too that must take priority over my knitting and my yarn. <laughs> But I think I've found a pretty good balance between uh, life and sanity and being able to, uh, yeah, manage every other responsibility but still have a little bit of time for myself to invest in just something fun for me. So, <clears throat> this is the Checkered Pony and... I'm going to just go through a couple of things. I don't have many things to show you. I have one finished object that I will show you a little bit here, but I'm going to make a separate, I'm gonna start making separate um, entries um, for all of my finished objects because I want to celebrate my accomplishments <laughs> and celebrate these items uh, to the extent that they should be <laughs> celebrated. Not because I'm looking for any kind of recognition or attention, but simply because I've worked hard on these and I'm proud of them and I want to dedicate a little bit of extra time and attention to them. But I'll still show you my finished objects here. But if you want to see them in more detail, I will start, as I complete things, I will start making separate um, showcase videos. Um, but my the one finished object I have is something I showed you was on my needles for my last podcast and it is a pair of socks which I had never made a pair of socks I'd never never made a single sock before I had tried to make a single sock once in the past uh, using oh let me pull out my yarn um, it was yarn from knit crate and I don't have my yarn tag this is what I have left so I definitely have enough for another pair of socks but it was in one of the knit crate monthly subscription boxes I can't recall which month it was um, exactly but it the colorway was called tit mouse and it's a real pretty um, blend of blues and grays and taupe and yellow and it's just real real, real pretty and so I decided to try a pair of socks and I also wanted to really push myself and so I knit them two at a time um, using the magic loop and I knit them toe up which I think is probably going to be my go-to method of knitting socks from now on. There were times when it was challenging but it was also my first time knitting socks ever. Um, and I think it's something that you just kind of get used to as you go and you learn as you go and now that I've done it I feel a lot more confident that I could do it again um, But here's my I'll just stop talking for a few minutes um, But here's my set of socks and I was able to um, Divide my yarn in such a way that they are practically identical um, It's kind of hard to see like I said, I will take more time to showcase these in a separate video, but you can see that the oh, if you can um, the striping pattern of the socks is almost identical. There's a few little um, times where the pattern may have gone off a little bit, but that's, I mean, it's hand dyed yarn, so what do you expect? Um, <clears throat> but I, I did, and I, I did make them short cuffs. I didn't make a, a tall um, sock, so just little crew socks. And my little boy loves them. I had intended these to be infant socks but they clearly turned out to be a little bit larger than what I had anticipated which is really okay because my three-year-old loves them he wants to wear them all the time and so I'm 
quite proud of myself that I was able to make it through the pattern. And like I said, I think toe up and two at a time is going to be my, my choice method of knitting socks. I will attempt some other types if it's, you know, cuff down. I, if I have enough, plenty of yarn, I know, um, I might try that method again. Um, but definitely two at a time regardless, because I can definitely see myself being the type of person that'll make it through one sock and just be like, oh, thank goodness. And then never ever knit another sock again. That would be a good example of what I did for my three-year-old this winter. I knit him one mitten and I have the yarn still for his other mitten and I never knit it. <laughs> so definitely two at a time for me. So there is my one finished object, a sweet little pair of toddler socks. Very happy with that. And like I said, I've got plenty of yarn for another pair. <clears throat> um, as far as my stash enhancement, I'm going to mix things up in my order a little bit. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> it is, um, it's blooming time. Spring has sprung and my family, <clears throat> we're all a little bit miserable. It's so beautiful, but we walk outside and our eyes just immediately start watering. So excuse me, please. Um, for our stash enhancement, <clears throat> I only have one thing to show you and I, again, I'm not going to take a lot of time because I made a separate video, um, but I last podcast told you how with Darn Good Yarn, when you make a purchase or you have a subscription, you acquire or accumulate um, points in, a, in an account and then you can cash in those points for <clears throat> like gift cards to use toward future purchases. And so I had a fair stash of points and um, I showed you something I ordered last time. Well, I was just, I had the fever <laughs> and so I went back on <clears throat> and so I ordered, <clears throat> they had some mystery closeout yarns. So I didn't know what I was going to be getting, but I cashed in my points and got um, requested a mystery yarn. And so that arrived and this is what I got. And it is a banana fiber yarn. The colorway is called Kaleidoscope. And it's made from banana fiber, which <clears throat> like I've said before, I'm really not certain exactly what that is. But I know that a lot of Darn Good Yarns products come from recycled like um, Sari Silk. And so the, the mission behind Darn Good Yarn is really one that's beautiful. Um, they're really focused on helping um, people in other countries uh, find work. They're trying to help eliminate a lot more waste uh, in the environment. So just all around, it seems to be a really great company. And they really have a very strong mission. And I think it's really beautiful. But this is handmade in India. And I had gotten one of these before, and so I, I found it. I pulled it out so I can show you. Every one of these is going to be so different. I mean, they are just, they're so unique and so fun. Um, and so, but this is the one that I had gotten last year. So you can see, um, and I just caked it, but you can see the differences in the textures and the colors, even the materials it looks like of what it, it's spun, how it's spun and what it's spun with. It's really interesting. So, um, you know, this will be a, a fun kind of crazy craft. Um, I'm going to have to look up something to do with this. There's 40 yards, 100 grams in here, but 40 yards. And so I'm thinking this will be a good yarn to work with my daughters, um, come up with something maybe we can make for them or for their friends, just something fun to, to share with, with people that are around us that we care about. So that's all I have for my stash enhancement, which is, it's always kind of sad. I always wish that I had like beautiful yarns to show you or something really, really, really stunning that I picked up. And these are fun, but um, yeah, I just, I didn't have a lot this, this week. Um, now for my whips, I do have a little bit, and I mean very, very little. I 
have not been working on this much. I think I only finished maybe a square of my Cozy Memories blanket since I was with you last. I think I just finished this square. Um, so I have not done much on this at all, but that's because of what I've been working on in addition to this. Um, now hopefully I will get more done on this. I always say hopefully. I'm such a hopeful person. I just hope that I can get to a lot of things. So this is in my project bag from Studio in the Green. It's got my fun enamel, enamel pin on there. I need to pick up some more pins. I want some more pins. Um, love my little pineapple bag. But my other whip, my other work in progress is what has really been taking up most of my knitting time. Um, and it kind of, kind of came out of the blue. Um, my local yarn shop, Blizzard Yarn and Fiber, every month or two, they'll have a knit along. And in the past, you know, we've done some really fun things like um, my night shift shawl was a knit along for Blizzard. Um, there's been a couple of other ones, but the next one that they're doing, they sent out advanced notice that they were going to be doing this knit along. It starts May 12th. And it's for a sweater. <laughs> and uh oh, I lost my little uh, my needle stopper. I want to make sure this doesn't go flying off my needle. Um, and having never knit a sweater before, I was happy for the notice because I wanted to get a jump on it. <laughs> so I've been feverishly working on this uh, sweater when I get the chance. Life is crazy right now. But um, it's, it's coming along. There's a couple, um, oh, well, okay, first I'll tell you, I started off making, I finally, oh my goodness, okay guys, man, y'all, I'm everywhere today. I finally did make a gauge swatch sample, but I made it out of this yarn. This is just 100% wool yarn. I think it's Cascade Farms. Um, and the swatch was, was beautiful, but I didn't, and it was, it was the right gauge and everything for the, the pattern, but it wasn't really, I wasn't feeling like, Ooh, that's a sweater that I really want to wear. And so also it's wool and we're getting into summer. I just wasn't sure about it. I wasn't sold on it. I happened to have a hank of acrylic yarn has a little bit of mohair in it um, and so that's this purple color and I had enough for this sweater pattern because it's a cropped sweater it's a shorter I keep losing my little stops they're just falling off all over the place hold on I really don't want to lose my stitches um, so it's this this purple color now it's knit it's a yoke <laughs> it's a lace yoke pattern. I'm so worried about losing my stitches. <clears throat> okay, one reason why I've been working on this so frantically is because I just want to get it off the needles so it doesn't like fly off on its own. Um, but it's a it's worked from the top down, and it has a lace. <laughs> if you can see it, a lace pattern in it. Now um, I'll tell you, the top of this. The top of this was done with a crochet chain cast on, which I had never done before. And I have not taken out yet because once I take this out, these are live stitches and I don't know what to do with them. That's the one thing about this pattern that has kind of frustrated me. It's, um, it has not told me what to do with these stitches. My best guess is that I'm supposed to pick up each of these stitches on needles as I remove the, the crochet chain and then bind them off immediately, which to me just seems a little bit, I don't know why. I don't know why I have to do that. Why couldn't I just have cast on with a, like a super stretchy cast on? Because it is supposed to be a, a boat neck. Um, it's supposed to be fairly loose, but I did choose, I, I chose the option of making a smaller um, neck around because I'm not I'm not a very broad shouldered person um, but I don't know what to do with this 
it's so scary so I've just left it in like it called in the pattern for me to take this thing out several steps ago and I still have not removed my my crochet chain cast on um, and I've worked through a fair majority it's packed on these needles there's so many stitches on these needles right now I worked through a fair majority of the lace pattern and this is a very very airy lightweight sweater it's um, there's a short sleeved option or a long sleeved option I still think I'm gonna make the long sleeved just because I'm always cold um, even <laughs> here in the summertime I'm still cold <clears throat> so I think I'm still gonna make the long sleeved option but this is the start of my sweater my first ever sweater and I still have what like two weeks a little over two weeks to work on this before the knit along starts at blizzard yarn and fiber so maybe I'll actually have it finished <laughs> maybe I can have it finished and then have started a new one <laughs> who knows it's actually gone really fast I only started this uh, maybe a week ago, Friday? Because I started it on, no, not even, not even a week. It's gone really fast, and I've only been sitting down and doing a couple of rows here and there. But it's such a, a airy, um, open, because you're using larger needles um, for the pattern. It's a very, very open stitch. So it'll be pretty cool for summer. There, you can see the color a little bit better there. Couple, and once I block it, I'm hoping you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see a lot more of the uh, lace patterns. And I've almost made it through the lace, so I'm almost to just, just knitting all the way around and then breaking for the sleeves, which is another thing I'm really, really nervous about. Oh my goodness, learning, learning so much. So there's my work in progress, a sweater I wasn't expecting to be casting on a sweater the last time I was with you guys. I was like, you know, let's see what I can come up with. Wow, let's make a sweater. Why not? Um, so, working on that. Now, some of my goals um, for the immediate future. <laughs> I've lost my little, hold on thing is under my feet it's driving me crazy um, some of my goals uh, for the the coming weeks and into the summer <laughs> oh my goodness you guys okay <clears throat> I'm I think I'm a pretty ambitious person maybe I'm a little bit too ambitious at times um, because I will tell you there are two different yarn crawls coming up um, either next month in May or f from May through September um, the first one is the Pacific Northwest yarn crawl which that I will tell you about and then the second one is the slow yarn crawl and I'll tell you about that one in a minute the first one I'm going to talk about is the Pacific Northwest Yarn Crawl, which I'm so excited. I have been mapping out my, I've been making my plan because my sweet husband has pretty much said that I will not be allowed to get a hotel. I cannot stay the night anywhere and I'm going to have to do this all in one day. It's 10 shops. The Yarn Crawl is from May 2nd through the 5th, so it's for four days. But it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Thursday and Friday, there's no way I could do it between the kids' school, my work, softball games. There's just no way. Sunday, I can't do it because of my work. Um, it's just, it, it's not possible. And we have church and everything. So Saturday. Saturday is my only day <laughs> that I can do this. May 4th. <clears throat> right? May 4th, I think. Um, anyway, Saturday's my day. So I have been like timing, like Googling how long it takes to get from one shop to the next. I have made out an entire itinerary <laughs> of how long, <laughs> of when I should be arriving in each place and how long I have in each, each, each store. Sorry, my three-year-old's playing. Just want to make sure he's not hurt. 
Um, <clears throat> and I think that one is doable. I'm really excited about it. And so if you are in the Pacific Northwest area, Washington State, I would say, um, Oregonians, I, I'm afraid it might be a little bit of too much of a drive. Um, but definitely if you're in the Washington Pacific Northwest, <clears throat> even the Seattle area would be pretty easy to get this done. Um, but you go online, you can print off your little, um, <laughs> your little passport. Um, and then inside it has all the different shops. It has all the rules and stuff for, you know, what to do. Uh, it has some of the prizes listed. There is a project bag that you get if you visit all 10. <coughs> all 10 shops, they have a Facebook page, they're on Instagram, but it's the PNW Yarn Crawl, Pacific Northwest Yarn Crawl. Check it out. Um, I, what I'm understanding, what I think is gonna happen is that each shop is gonna have a piece of a pattern. And so, shh, Quinn, um, if you visit all 10 shops, you'll have the entire pattern for a mystery knit. And so that, that seems fun. I'd, I'd like to be able to do that. So I can do this. This I can handle. Now, <laughs> for the slow yarn crawl, I have been saying, oh man, I want to make this work. I, there's, you know, it's <clears throat> a yarn crawl that spans from the end of May to the beginning of September. It goes pretty much from Memorial Day to Labor Day. I was like, surely I can make this, this happen over the entire summer. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna visit all these shops. <laughs> well, last night, my husband and I, I was like, you know what? I should probably look up where some of these, uh, these shops are. I can start mapping out my, uh, my plan for when I, <laughs> when I visit all these places. <laughs> well, it turns out yarn shops are like six hours away like from where I am I some of them are almost pretty much on the Canadian border stretching down almost to the California border and then over into Idaho and I don't know how I'm possibly going to do all this I can hope that somehow it's gonna work out but I don't really see how. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna work out. This is gonna be tough. Um, so I don't know that the slow yarn crawl is going to come to fruition for me, but there is still, shh, no, 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 leave that alone, please. Um, we have my ball winder right there. Go play, okay? Um, <clears throat> the slow yarn crawl still has a mystery knit along, which is still so much fun. And on Ravelry right now you is the, the pre-sale for the pattern. So you can go ahead and purchase your pattern at $6. And then the first clue comes out May 1st. And then there's three clues. One comes out every week. So you'd have three weeks to, you know, well, you'd have forever to knit it. But three clues, three weeks. Um, I'm going to do the mystery knit along no matter what. <laughs> Whether or not I make it to every one of these shops or not, I'm still going to do the mystery knit along. And so I've got, I, hold on, okay. I've already gotten my yarn. I found this, shh, I found this in my stash. And this is my yarn. Shh, Quinn, go play please. Um, and this is from Alexandra's Crafts. And I got this at Blizzard Yarn last year sometime. When I, it was close to when I first started on my needles. And I, I just loved the colors so much in this. I just had to have it just so that I could have it for later on because I knew I'd want to use it. But I just love these colors. And this is her Black Butte base. Um, it's 60% superwash merino, 20% silk, and 20% yak. And this was actually one of the suggested yarns for the Mystery Knit Along, which is why I chose it. And I took it out of my stash. Um, so I think it'll be just perfect um, for the pattern for the Mystery Knit Along for the Slow Yarn Crawl. Now there are some shops that are close by. Well, <laughs> there are no shops in Vancouver. <laughs> And I don't think there were any in Portland at all. I, I can't remember. 
<clears throat> but there were a lot of shops. Most of them are like way north and there actually is a good chance that I could make all of the northern shops, all of the Washington shops. Um, the, um, some of the Oregon shops that are down in California, practically in California or in Idaho, those are a little bit more tricky for me. So I don't know. That would really take something special for me to get there. Maybe I just need a, um, a carpool buddy. That could help me. Uh, so that's pretty much all I have for today. Um, my goals for this week are to make sure that my family is happy and healthy and fed and clothed and bathed, make sure that I have everything done for my work, <laughs> and then to knit. <laughs> and I am wanting to put several, I'm hoping to put, you know, a couple more squares on my Cozy Memories blanket and make it through this sweater that I'm working on. Honestly, that's probably all I'm going to be doing uh, before I cast and before I cast anything else on. I don't want too much on my needles right now, and then I just get overwhelmed. So just two two projects right now, and that's okay with me. Um, I hope you guys have a great week, and I will look forward to talking to you again next time. All right, guys. Bye.